Alright, so at this point, you should have two center 3x3 three three blocks completed. I have the yellow center for my top completed, and I have the white center for my bottom, which means that we have to do the remaining four centers, which are blue, orange, green, and red. Because there are more pieces in the 5x5 five five cube than the 4x4, four four, there are also more patterns that you will see when placing the last two centers, which are the trickiest to place. I will not be able to cover every single pattern that will occur when placing the last centers, however I'll give you some examples and key methods that should prove useful when trying to place them. I will not be using any algorithms for this step, but will instead logically explain how to do the remaining centers. With a little bit of practice, you will most likely come up with your own way to solve any pattern that you will see. Okay, so what we want to do now is to complete a third center. To do so, we're going to look around the cube for a center that is closer to being completed than the rest. We're also going to hold the yellow and white centers on the left and right sides of the cube so that we don't mess those centers up when placing the others. Since I have already explained the basics of making the 3x3 three three center blocks, I'm going to go a little bit faster when placing the next two centers so that we can go over how to place the last two centers in more detail. Alright, so if I look around the cube, I'll notice that I have two 2x1 two orange blocks already solved for us here and here. So I want to go on to place the orange center next. Make sure that you're holding the yellow and the white sides on the left and right. Okay, so what I want to do is basically join this piece up with that piece. So I'm going to put this one vertically, and I'm also going to put this one vertically so that they're both in the bottom two layers of the 3x3 three three blocks that they're on. Now I can flip this piece up, and I don't have to worry about messing up any of the other centers right now. So I formed a 2x2. Two two. Now I want to get a 2x3 there by putting another one that is already solved for us here. So I'm going to put this one vertically, and I'm going to get an empty spot vertically on the bottom left. Now I can flip this piece up. So now I have a 2x3. And now I want to get a 3x1 block next to that. So here is a corner center piece, and here is an edge center piece. This one's on the bottom, so I have to get this one on the bottom. Now when I pair this piece up with that one, I have to be sure that I'm not messing this piece up. So once I get it like that, I have to turn it vertically so that I can flip this back and I reform that 2x3. So now I have a 2x1 here, and I want to form a 3x1. So this corner center piece is down here in the bottom left, so I want to get an empty spot on the bottom left up here. Now don't forget, when I flip this around, I have to turn it vertically so that I resolve that 2x3. Okay, so now I have a 2x3 and a 3x1. So now I want to get them next to each other. So I'm going to put this piece vertically on the left side, and I'm going to flip this piece up because it's already vertically on the right side. So now I have solved the orange center. So now we're going to go on to solve the next easiest center, the one that is probably the most solved for us. So here you'll see that I have a 2x2 two two green block already solved for us. So let's go ahead to place the green center next. So here is a corner center piece and here is an edge center piece. So I'm going to flip this piece up and don't forget that we have to flip it down to resolve this orange center. So I flip it up, turn this vertically so I keep this 2x1 intact and then I have to flip this piece back down to resolve the orange center. Alright, so now I have a 2x1 green block here. So now I want to join it next to this 2x2. Two two. So this is vertically in the upper right, so I'm going to get an empty spot in the upper right here. Now I'm going to flip this piece up, turn this 2x3 vertically so that I can flip this back down, and I have to resolve that orange center. So now I have a 2x3 green block here. So now I have to get a 3x1 next to that. So here is a corner center piece. Here's the edge center piece. This one's on the top. So I'm going to put it down on the bottom, like the one that is up here, the edge center piece. Now when I flip this piece up, I'm going to join it up with this one. When I do that, I'm going to be kicking this piece out. So when I flip this piece up, I'm going to have to flip it back down to resolve that orange center. So I flip it up. Now you'll notice that this green piece will return to this upper left spot. So if I flip this piece up and flip these two around 180 degrees, when I bring it back, it will form automatically that 3x1 block that I wanted. 
All right, so now I have to get this three by one block. I have to get it next to the two by three. So now I'm not going to be able to just put it like that and flip it around because that's going to mess up the orange center. So I have to get this vertically on the right side so that when I flip it around, I kick out this piece. So I'm going to flip it around, kick out that piece, turn it around 180 degrees, and then I have to bring this piece all the way back around to resolve the orange and the green centers. So now I have the white, the yellow, the green, and the orange centers completed. Okay, so if we look at the last two centers, which in my case are blue and red, you should notice that some of the pieces have already arranged themselves into groups or blocks. This is convenient for us. However, you must realize that we will not be able to solve the last two centers in the exact same way as we did the other four. We only have these two centers left to work with now, and we can't form pieces on the other sides, since we already have those centers complete. What we must do then is to get as many pieces onto their proper side as we can, and then solve both centers at the same time. So I'm going to get as many red pieces onto the red side, and also as many blue pieces onto the blue side, and then go from there. At that point, we should have two similar patterns on each of these sides. Alright, so I see that we have a 2 by one red block here, and we also have a 2 by one block here, so let's go ahead and join those. I'm going to put this one vertically, and this one's in the upper right. So I'm going to lift it up, get that new 2 by 2 out of the way so it stays intact, and then I could bring this back down. So now I'll see that I have another 2 by one block here. So I want to put that vertically. This is in the bottom left, so I'm going to get an empty spot in the bottom left here. So once I bring this up, I'm going to see that I formed a 2 by 3 block. So I want to keep that intact, so I'm going to get it out of the way. And then I'm going to bring this face back down. So now what you see is that we have a pretty common pattern in which we have one edge centerpiece that is incorrect. Basically these two pieces have been switched. What you want to do in this case is you want to put the the edge centerpiece either here or here. So either on the left side or the right side. If we put this one on the top face on the right side, we have to put this one on the front face also on the right side. Then what we're going to do is we're going to bring the one on the front face and kick out the one on the top face by twisting these two faces up. We're then going to turn the top down so that this piece is facing down and then we're going to bring the right back. So let me do that move one more time. So I have them both positioned on the right in the middle layer. I'm going to bring this face up and then I'm going to shift this down by twisting this towards me and then put this piece back down. Then what you'll notice we have a single corner center piece here and now we have these two pieces here. So what I could do is I could bring this piece up to meet this piece. So I'm going to put this piece vertically down. So now I could join this piece up with that piece. Once we do that we're going to have to obviously put this back down. So I'm going to bring this up and now what I want to do is I want to shift this vertically and then I want to bring this lone piece back down. Now I could join this piece up with these two by turning this horizontal. Now I could bring this piece up. So now I have a 3 by one that I want to turn vertically and bring back down. So now if you had a similar situation to that, you should have all of your centers complete. Alright, another situation that you'll come across pretty frequently is one where you have two corner center pieces out of place. What you want to do is basically get these as close as possible to each other by putting one here in the lower right and one up here in the upper right. You can also put them here and here in the upper left and lower left, but you'd have to do the opposite move and I prefer to work with the right side. What you do then is you bring this piece on the front face up to the top face by shifting both right faces clockwise. You're then going to turn the top clockwise so that you see this two by one block go horizontal. What you'll then notice is that when you bring this face back down, you're going to join this corner piece with this two by one. So I'm going to bring this face back down. You'll then notice that we have a blue three by one block here 
and a red 3 by one block here. So let me do that move real quick again. Once they're as close as possible to each other, we're going to bring both right faces up, shift that clockwise so that this is horizontal, and then bring both right faces down. Then, in order to get this 3 by one onto this face, we're going to put this vertically, and we're going to also put this 2 by 3 vertically. I'm going to then bring this 3 by one up to the top face, turn the top 180 degrees, and then bring the right face back down. You should now have all of your centers complete. What we're going to do in the next part is match up these triple edge pieces.